When the bite gets tough, fishing a young tube slow can't be beat. Look at that tank. This thing is so freaking thick. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to get stronger than you will ever need to be in your basement, in your garage, in your home gym, wherever that may be. So this, this type of training is not meant to make you an elite athlete or you're not going to go win a powerlifting competition off of this. But if you just want to get in better shape, you want to get stronger, you want to get more athletic, uh, you want to keep your muscle mass and bone density for the rest of your life and just stay youthful and capable and not turn into a frail old man or woman. This is the type of training that will be good for you. Um, full body training, nothing too terribly hard on the body. You're not breaking yourself down too much. Um, all the reps are probably around 85%, either 85% reps, 85% weight, or kind of a combination of the two just to get you to where you're pushing it hard, you're challenging yourself, but you're not waking up super sore or anything. Um, as long as you're not mixing in tons of new movements, if you're doing kind of the same things or somewhat similar movements, you're not gonna wake up too sore, which a lot of people like to chase that soreness. A lot of people feel like if they're not getting sore, they're not making progress. Damn cats scratching on mats. And that's absolutely not true. Um, is if you get, you kind of hit a ceiling somewhere to where you're strong enough and to push it to the next level, you need to do really smart training. You need to push it harder than is really good for your health. And really you're just shooting for performance at that time. And that's really not sustainable. If you stay at that level for too long, you get injuries. So look at like the elite of the elite athletes are always getting hurt. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, is part of their sport too, but they're lifting heavy, they're playing their sport. If you look at power lifters, or whatever, those guys are some of the most beat up people on the planet. Every joint in their body hurts. So if you don't, if you, those are none of your goals. If you just want to get stronger, you want to feel good for the rest of your life, and you just want to be capable, this is the type of training for you. So I'm going to walk you through it today. First, I'm going to do a warm up, and I'm not really going to show you guys that, just to give you kind of an idea. I'm doing some lateral jumps some ground rolls, crawling, uh, lunge walks, animal walks, jump ropes, terminal knee extensions, squat holds, overhead reach, pike stretch, spinal rotation, um, some serratus anterior work, some high knee hip flexor drills, more animal walks, some basic shoulder and rotator cuff, Cossack squats, unweighted just for mobility, hip swings, hip crossover, finger push-ups. All that stuff is a warm-up I've developed over the years to kind of hit some spots that I feel like my training is not hitting and shore up some weak links or spots that I think need a little bit more work for me. Um, if you, I'll, I'll do a video in the future of my full warm-up if anyone's interested in that. Comment below if you are interested, you wanna see what my full warm-up looks like. Otherwise, just for you, just do something to get the blood flowing um, this one takes me about 20 minutes and I've since I've implemented that I've really felt better uh, my mobility's better um, I, I just feel better overall so it's really important to me if you just want to get a decent warm-up in um, do whatever you have at home I used to do the bike and the ski just like five minutes each and then maybe a little bit of uh, stretching or movement and that made me feel pretty good too. I like, I prefer this one, but if, if you don't wanna spend 20 minutes on a warm up, just do five to 10 minutes, get the blood flowing, get everything loosened up, um, do some like body weight movements or some animal movements to get you ready. And then this is the actual workout. Now some of this stuff you may not have at home. Um, I'm gonna do glued ham developer raises, pull ups, presses, overhead presses and deadlifts. So this is like a cluster of four, three sets of each. So I'm gonna go upper or lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body. Actually, that one's backwards. Lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body. So while I'm doing my lower body stuff, my upper body is resting for the most part. I mean, some of these movements, your upper body's still getting some stimulus, but for the most part, the main focus 
is on the lower body or the upper body and one is kind of resting while the other one is doing the work. Saves time, you don't have to take as long of breaks in between lifting. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like spending all day in the gym, so. Next up will be just a cluster of three here. Push press, row, weighted push up. So you can tell all of these are full body movements. Um, this is strength work, a little bit lower reps for most of them. Pull ups and uh, weighted push ups, a little bit higher reps. But the other ones are pretty low reps, uh, just working on strength. Not too much sets or anything. I'm not just get. I'm not getting carried away here. I'm just giving my body like the basic signal. Hey, you need to be strong. You need to stay strong. But I'm not doing so much that I'm feeling beat up or broke down. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna do this warm up here, and then let's just get into it. I'm gonna show you guys one set of all of these. What those look like. Maybe explain some of my equipment to you guys a little bit. And hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully you take something away from this. Hopefully you start uh, hitting it in your home gym, changing your life, becoming healthier, becoming stronger, and aging gracefully without beating yourself up. All right, so first up today is glute ham developer raises. Um, I like to have it set. I got a little notch in there, or a little mark where I got it set. And when my feet are back and I'm touching the pads here, my knees are about right here. Um, put your knees up farther and higher you'll get a better workout but your hamstrings and your knees will be sore the next day so i like to do it just right here put your knees right here so that when you're coming up they slide down a little bit when you're coming up they slide up a little bit but not so far up here that you're just putting tons of stress on the hamstrings so that's what it looks like I'm gonna climb in here, put my feet in between the two pads here. I'm gonna put my toes on this foot plate. This, this ensures that your gastrocnemius calf muscle will also help you with the calf raise here. Like I said, get the knees right here, feet on there, ankle or uh, heels up on this top pad. And slowly lower down. Raise up, up to right here. There it is, eight reps. I feel like eight is a really good number. It's low enough that you're still working on strength and you're not just doing tons of reps, but it's not so low that you're not really feeling the muscle and you're not getting a very good pump in there. You're just really pulling hard to try to get back up because the settings are hard on there if you're doing a set of three or four reps. Um, so it's about 85%. I'd say probably, my max would probably be 10 or 12, so maybe it's slightly less than 85, but I'm doing three sets of it, so eight I feel like is a great number. Hamstrings are more of a fast twitch group, so you don't want to be doing like 12, 15 reps or whatever. I feel like you said eight is a good balance between strength and endurance. If you guys are interested in getting a glute hand developer for yourself, there's a lot of things you can do on them. I posted a video of a bunch of different exercises I like to do on them. Just search Chris Fish and Fitness Glute Ham Developer. Uh, this one's from Titan Fitness, and I believe I got it from Amazon on sale for $3.15 with free shipping. So it is more of an expensive piece of equipment, but it's very versatile. And $315 bucks is really, when you're comparing it to some of the other high-end models, it's pretty much a steal. So. You can find that on Amazon for like under 350 bucks. I'd say you're doing pretty well. Very versatile. If you're serious about your strength training, check that out. Otherwise, I've also posted some videos about doing hamstring training at home with a like a carpet slider, a slide board type of deal. So you can check that one out too. 
So next up is going to be pull-ups. I'm going to be doing two sets on my escape climbing little homemade handles here. I really like these because they rotate. It's more friendly on the elbow. So on Amazon, I got some escape climbing pegs. And these are actually meant to hang vertically like this. And they come with one little screw eyelet here. I just bought another one at the hardware store, put it in there on the other end. I got like a eyelet beam going through the uh, floor beams here. And then I just got a carabiner to lock that in and then like just a heavier rope here. So, um, so far I really love those. Those have worked out great. I also have a rope here that I'll pull up and over, hang down and you can do like a, I'll make sure this, you do like a staggered pull kind of mimic rope climbing a little bit otherwise the gymnastic rings here so next up set of 15 pull-ups You'll notice I'm doing basically a full extension on the way down. You don't have to lock your elbows out 100%, but right to about here. None of this like half rep crap that a lot of people do. And then you're pulling all the way down until your elbows touch your sides. Okay guys, next up is deadlifts. Um, I do these with a hex bar or a trap bar, they're also called. Uh, so a little bit more quads in this one and a little bit less hamstrings and glutes, a little bit friendlier on the lower back. All in all, I just think it's a little bit more orthopedically friendly version, I guess you could say. And I'm already doing hamstring raises on the glute hand developer, so I appreciate a little bit more quad development and quad uh, working in the deadlifts here. So my first set is a set of five, like a primer set with 300 pounds. And then my second and third set is a set of three with 360. Um, I weigh 180, so 360 is double body weight. And that's kind of the ceiling I want to just stay at, I want to maintain. I used to go heavier, I used to go to like four, 415 for sets of five even. And I really didn't notice much performance benefit playing uh, volleyball or out sprinting or jumping or running or anything. I really didn't notice much of a benefit and really it just made me feel more beat up. So. I lightened it up a little bit, uh, focus more on technique and just just makes you feel better, makes you feel more refreshed the next day, not so beat up. So set five. <clears throat> So next up is overhead presses. Um, I do this with a kettlebell. And this one is 62 pounds, two sets of six, and then I do a set of three with 72 pounds. I think, or 73 or 75, whatever the uh, on it Gorilla ones are. This is an on it Stormtrooper kettlebell. It's freaking sweet. So I recommend spending the extra money on this. Not really. It's probably $100 more or $70 more or something than a regular kettlebell. Really no additional benefit actually. The shape of it digs into your forearm a little bit more, but I bought it, whatever. I'm stuck with it.
So that's it for this first cluster, guys. I'm gonna run through it a couple more times. Not gonna video those to keep the video short. And now I get to listen to music, so it's a bonus. Catch back up with you guys for the last three. For being 30 years old, I've been lifting in a home gym for a long time, since I was 18. You can tell how long I've been lifting. I got Muscle Driver USA plates. Comment anyone if you remember Muscle Driver USA right in the beginning when CrossFit was taken off. Okay, next up is push press. Now I'm gonna be doing this on a landmine setup. If you're not familiar with what a landmine is, you can get just a regular fixed version or you can get this. This is called a post landmine. And it's just a, kind of like a little uh, end, I don't know, a knob end, like similar to a barbell that would go into these weight plates. But instead of, instead of putting a bar in here, you're just putting this little end on a couple stacked bumper plates. And then it's got the landmine attachment here, which will rotate basically up, down, side to side, circles, whichever way you want to do it. You put a barbell in there, and then I got a couple 45s and a Titan Viking push press handle or landmine handle. I don't know exactly what it's called. Titan Viking handle, I believe. And I, I kind of sound like a Titan whore showing off all my stuff. Titan Fitness makes some decent stuff. Um, if money was a non-issue, I'd be buying 100% Rogue, but I don't think Rogue makes one of these yet, so this is a Titan one. So, I like doing them. Let's see if this is a good camera angle. I like doing the push press with this. You can do it with kettlebells, you can do it with dumbbells, barbell, sandbag, whatever. I really like the landmine though, because you're not going straight up and down vertical. You're kind of leaning in and pushing forward and you're not falling forward because the weight is holding you and pushing you back. So it's a different strength angle, a uh, little bit of variety. Um, it's good for like sprinting or any kind of like broad jumping or any time where you're jumping forward because the strength angle, you're pushing forward, you're not just pushing straight up. Or if you're training for like vertical jumping, a regular push press would probably be better. This one's good for like horizontal stuff. Or if you're doing a lot of vertical training, just to get this one in to do some horizontal work is great. A little tricky to get under it, but there we go. Once you do, you're going to squat down, explode. I don't know if you could catch the floor there, but oh, this one is really nice because you can pop up onto your feet, onto your toes. So you're working that ankle extension along with the knee extension, hip extension. It's a great exercise to increase your power. All right, next up is rows. A bunch of different ways you can do these two. Uh, you can do barbell bent over rows, which I'm not a huge fan of just because it puts a lot of stress on the back. Um, you can do like a just a arm on the knee row. Um, you can do it like press down on a plyo box or a bench or something like that. You can do incline rows on gymnastics rings or barbell or a Smith machine, I mean, or, or a fixed barbell or really any fixed object. Um, I'm gonna do them renegade style. So this means that you're in a push up position. And I'm gonna have my other hand on my homemade balance beam here. If you're interested in one of these babies, all you need is a couple car jacks, a log you find out in the woods, and like 100 feet of duct tape, and you're set. So, I'm gonna get a little bit wider than uh, shoulder rest stance, one arm right here, stable base, and I'm gonna do rows from here. Because 
you're in this position here, you're not letting your body say, you're not arching way up. You're gonna get some good ab work and because you only have one arm down and the other arm's doing work, you're gonna get some oblique work too because your obliques are gonna resist this twisting and this off-centered center gravity here, this off-centered base here, I mean. So guys, I'm down to the last ones. Two sets of weighted push-ups. I usually do a set of 12 with my 80 pound sandbag on my back, and then a set of 20 with my 50 pound sandbag on my back. So, can't really tell. This is an Alpha Strong sandbag. It's been used so much, the label's been worn off, but this thing has been with me for 10 years. I love it so much. It's the best sandbag I've ever used. It's never leaked. I've had Ultimate sandbags, I've had brute force sandbags, I've had some other kind of cheap brand. All of them leaked. This one has never leaked. My 50 pounder has never leaked. My 160 pounder has never leaked. That thing's sitting out of my garage, I throw in my sled for sled drags. They're the best sandbags I've ever used and I highly endorse them. Uh, they do come with some like hard plastic inserts in the handle which I really didn't care for that much. So I just cut like a little slit in there, pulled them out, and they still hold up extremely well. So if you're in the market for a sandbag, one of the most versatile home gym pieces of equipment you can have, check out Alpha Strong Sandbags. So, I'm going to pick it up, drop it, kind of even the weight out. Take a wide stance, and I'm basically going to snatch it over my head. Set it down over my shoulders. Come down on your knees, and then move it into place. So it's kind of like from your lower back to the base of your neck. Shoulder width, or slightly wider than shoulder width push-ups. All the way down. So that was it guys, a sample of my heavier training day. Like I said, this is all you need to get super strong. You're not going to be breaking powerlifting records or anything, but you're going to be plenty strong. All these movements are more joint friendly, hopefully have you feeling good for a very long time, hopefully keep you free from joint injuries or anything. Just remember, you don't have to push it too hard, you're not, you're not trying to sacrifice your health or anything like that for for extra gains on the bar or anything worry about your actual life the gym is here to just enhance it is not here to take it over uh that being said don't there's so many people that just can't stick with it just make it a routine of yours i'm you don't need to spend a whole lot of time here my warm-up took me 20 minutes and my workout took me an hour and I do that three days a week and this is my longest workout of the week. So it's not that much time. And if you don't care to be in phenomenal shape, you just wanna get in a little bit better shape and feel a little bit better, you could easily get away with a five minute warm up and a 25 minute workout. So don't put it off until tomorrow. Uh, start today, just make something a habit. Just get down, get out in your gym, uh, get out in your garage, go down your basement, maybe pick up some kind of a floor mat or something, a couple of free weights and just start something. Start somewhere, build from there. I started working out in my basement gym with some crappy floor mats and a 35 pound kettlebell and a 44 pound kettlebell and a pull up bar, that was it. And it's evolved into tons of equipment, tons of different exercises. I love the whole process, but you really don't need that much. I take it to kind of another extreme level. I'm very passionate about training and it's extremely fun for me. It's extremely enjoyable and it's 
fulfilling. So if you, if you don't need a, if you don't need to be like me, if you don't need to take it to the extreme, all you need is a few pieces of equipment. Subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be posting a lot of fitness videos this winter, um, showing you how to do things with different equipment. So, I mean, you could get, you could go out and get a couple hundred bucks worth of equipment and be set. A lot of body weight movements, um, a lot of uh, minimal equipment movements, what I like to do. So, subscribe to this channel if you're interested in more workout videos without too much equipment things you can do at home so you don't need to go to the gym you don't need a membership you don't need to stand in line to use equipment and you don't have sweaty people sweating all over it and not wiping it up or whatever everything's under your control i'll link some relevant videos i've made in the past down here i'll show you my lighter day i'll show you my high intensity interval training day and like i said subscribe for more content coming soon thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time.